after 25 years of teaching the interpersonal dimension of performance to tens of thousands, Dr. Rick Brandon became convinced that company leaders were neglecting a key strategic dimension of success he calls organizational savvy. It's a vital set of skills for handling the elephant in the room, organizational politics. Rick's intriguing and humorous worldwide speaking engagements, global seminar company, and Wall Street Journal best-selling book on this taboo topic make him the preeminent thought leader on the cutting-edge skills of high-integrity political tactics for career and company success. How many of you define politics in the same way that derives from the Greek derivative, the Greek derivative, you know that one? The two words, poly meaning many, and ticks meaning blood-sucking parasites. Right? Raise your hand. Yeah, takes one to know one. We're going to try and reframe politics in a more constructive way because it causes a lot of pain and it's very nebulous. We're going to have you be able to understand it in a more objective way so we can get our arms around it because it's usually swept under the carpet. Rick has a solid track record for helping sales and service audiences improve their self-talk, the inner game of performance. He applies these same positive mindset skills to reframing politics as a constructive vehicle for achieving influence and impact with integrity. Rather than be here to rile you up, what I'm hoping to do is not motivate you, but give you some simple tools that you can use to motivate yourself. Be your own coach. Be your own manager. I'm going to talk about a technology that's used in sports performance, in medicine, and in sales training to impact your sales, to help you maintain more self-control, more self-discipline, to be your own coach, to manage yourself, to, to psych yourself up. That's what we're going to do today. So I'd like to define what I mean by self-talk, I'd like to share with you some of the dynamics of self-talk, give you a chance to get off of automatic and look at what some of your patterns are with your own self-talk, and then give you some seven specific strategies, practical strategies, not just change your self-talk, but some specific tools that you can use real-time when you're out in the field. You know, a lot of people, I say, it can be changed, and you know what their self-talk is? They say, oh, I can't change my self-talk. <laughs> How's that for self-talk? <laughs> I can't change my self-talk. You said it was automatic and it's awkward. I didn't say you can't. I said it's challenging, just like selling is challenging. But it can be done. Just like integrating all your companies is, is challenging. It can be done. And you guys are doing it. And this week is testimony to that. Marshall McLuhan was the guy that coined the phrase, the medium is the message. He also had another phrase. He also said, I'm not sure who discovered water, but I'm almost certain it wasn't fish. We are least aware of that which pervades our whole existence. We're least aware of what's all around us all the time. In this case, your self-talk that's programming your brain at 400 to 600 words a minute, and yet we're least aware of it because it's right in front of us. So what you did a few minutes ago when I had you talk with your neighbor was take yourself off of automatic, and that is the first step. So congratulations. Victims aren't people who see themselves as responsible, as response-able response hyphen able. They see it all happening to them from the outside. If there's a downsizing, that's a bummer, but what they do is they make it worse. Victims see it as never ending and it's happening to them. They have no control and there's nothing they can do to cope. Whereas someone who comes from a mindset of accountability is master of their destiny, they see victimhood simply as a state of mind, and it's negotiable. Rick's riveting message and engaging delivery recently made him the most requested speaker for the prestigious Institute for Management Studies, which booked him 50 times around the world. Globally respected professional associations like the Conference Board and Fortune 500 audiences have learned to navigate organizational politics with a moral compass. Dr. Brandon's major keynote messages include the ethical politics wake-up call, leveraging your political style, and an overview of the organizational savvy skills pyramid. And what some people do is they become so indignant, so outraged, so morally uh, ticked off, or resentful, or intimidated, or anxious, or afraid, or angry, they quit and leave. And they go to the next company. And what do they find? Same. Same music, maybe a little bit different words, right? Or worse, they don't quit and leave. They quit and stay, right? Now they're 
their resentment, their outrage, their disgust, their anger, their anxiety, their intimidation about corporate politics that happen everywhere drains their time, drains their energy, drains their motivation, drains their morale, and oh yeah, drains their performance while they're whining about it, playing ain't it awful at the water cooler. Congratulations, this is on Wall Street Journal's uh, top bestseller list. You got it. What we do right out of the starter's gate is we define two political styles. There's the power of ideas person, who's a little less political, and the power of person individual, who's a little more political. They define power differently. They have different aspirations and mentalities about power, ego, turf, ambition, self-promotion. And that's the first step is to be aware of where you're at on a continuum. Rick's speaking topics can also include more in-depth teaching to target strategies from the Savvy Skills Pyramid, replacing demotivation about corporate politics with determination and inspiration. We read the power holders, who's formally in power on the org chart, and who's informally in power. Because politics is partly about reading the white space on the organizational chart, not just the official titles. This is like Woody Allen, that famous Woody Allen line, where his five-year-old son says, Daddy, who's the boss in the family? And Woody says, well, how could you ask me that? What do you mean, who's the boss in the family? Daddy's the boss in the family. Mommy's just the decision maker. After years of rave review speaking, clients urged Dr. Brandon to write Survival of the Savvy, published by Simon & Schuster. Written in the style of Rick's inspiring, fun, and practical speeches, this straight-talking book quickly made the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. It was called the definitive book on political savvy by Dr. Robert Eichinger and earned endorsements from industry leaders like Ken Blanchard, Harvey McKay, and many CEOs. With positive reviews from radio, TV, popular press, and industry magazines, Survival of the Savvy won Fast Company Magazine's Reader's Choice Award and was awarded the Book of the Month for both Forbes.com and the Institute for Management Studies. It was distributed throughout China and India, and its concepts are taught around the world.